Hey everybody, it's Mr. Bennett. I am back with a new section and we're going to start looking at these things called particle diagrams and we're going to tie that into density today. And particle diagrams are really helpful because it helps us describe what matter is doing. And the first thing we need to know is that the phase of matter, so solid, liquid, gas, is determined by the energy of particles in that substance. So all of my substances, all matter has energy. And depending on how much energy there is, what quantity of energy there is, that determines what phase of matter I'm in. And we use particle diagrams to show those relative energy levels. Now we're not gonna be putting numbers on these. We're not going to be calculating how many joules there are in one type of matter versus another. This is really relative. And so we've got a scale set up here. So low energy, medium energy, and high energy. And in this one, the particles are vibrate. There's a vibrate motion. So there's not much movement. So if you had a bunch of particles, they would be kind of sitting next to each other like this, packed down pretty tightly, can't get any closer. And they just kind of sit there and they buzz next to each other. And this represents a solid. Oops. So a solid, uh, all the particles next to each other, they are moving, they're vibrating because there's a little bit of energy there, uh, but they, they're not really moving past each other. Medium energy, what the particles, they start to do is they start to slide past each other. So they have a little bit more energy and they slide, they, they start to move a little bit more, they get a little bit more free flowing and they spread themselves out. And so we're all kind of still concentrated in one part of the container. Uh, we're not flying off and doing our own thing. We're not totally disassociated, but my particles, they can move around there. So this one represents a liquid. Those particles, they flow, and that's why a liquid takes the shape of its container. We're going to do that in a separate video. And then finally, in high energy, these particles are flying around. So the highest, well not highest, there is a phase of energy or a phase of matter past a gas. We're not going to get into that. It's called plasma, like the sun is made of plasma. Uh, but these, these are very high energy. These particles, they are totally spread out from each other. They are not interacting at all. They have a lot, a lot of energy flying everywhere. Uh, and this one represents a gas. So as energy is added, those particles, essentially, they begin to move more. They start to move more and they start to spread out more. So they, they gain energy, they move faster and faster, and they spread out into solids, liquids, and gases. Same thing, if I take energy away, they, they lose energy and they start to slow down and they start to kind of clump up and condense back with one another. And it's very, very important to remember that particles are always moving. And this is something that can trip you up. So if you get a question about which one is not moving, well, there's none that are not moving because there's always energy available. So particles are always at least vibrating next to each other. Um, and so let's look at density now that we've got kind of these, these are called particle diagrams, right? So we'll be drawing some pictures showing how these particles interact with each other. Uh, and density is how we describe the packing of the particles. So particle diagrams are good for showing density, which is essentially the compactness of a, of a substance. How tight are those substances packed, or how tight are those particles packed together? So real quick, just think to yourself, which phase of matter would you expect to have the lowest density? Which one would have the highest density? And we're gonna be talking about exceptions to those rules. We're gonna be talking about what substances in particular, water, how does its density change based on its phase of matter? So here's our formula. Density is a calculation, it's a derived unit. So D stands for density, M, as always, is our mass, and V is the volume. So density measures how much mass there is in a given amount of space. So here's an example. A sample of liquid has a mass of 8 grams. So use your annotation skills. Underline that 8 grams. And a total volume of 10 milliliters. So what is the density of that substance? Just like solving for speed, just like solving for any three variable equation, we're going to throw our data into the question. So density is what I'm solving for. Here's your question mark. Equals the mass, 8 grams, divided by a volume of 10 milliliters. And when we solve for this, grams and milliliters do not cancel each other out, so we end up with a density of 0 0.8 grams per milliliter. So for every milliliter of stuff, it's going to weigh 0 0.8 grams. And every substance has its own density. There are uh, some that are very similar to one another, some that you have to remember, some that you don't have to remember, um, but that's, that's what it is. How much stuff, how much material, how much matter is there in a given amount of space, in a given volume. And substances, 
they float or they sink based on differences in density. So our density can be used to determine, will a substance float in a liquid, will it sink in a liquid? And there's one you need to know, the density of water, H2O, equals one gram per milliliter as a liquid. Its density is one gram per milliliter put as liquid because density changes with our phase, and we'll come back to that. So if I have um, a liquid, so if you draw like little wavies, this is gonna be water, we'll assume it's water unless I tell you otherwise. And I have a block of stuff, right? If its density is lower than one, so D is less than 1.0 gram per milliliter, it will float because the water there's enough buoyant force pushing up on the block and as not as much an unbalanced force essentially so the there's gravity pulling down on this block the buoyant force pushing back up on the block is greater than the force pulling down on the block so this one will float conversely so there's another sample of water if a block is down here its density is greater than one gram per milliliter it will sink the force pushing down on the block is greater, or I'm sorry, the force pulling down on the block is greater than the force pushing back up. And by changing the shape of these objects like a boat, uh, we can actually force things to float or to sink. And that's going to be a lab that we're going to do. That's on the second page of your notes. So go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, if you have questions, again, always leave me a comment if you have a question, or you can hit me in class uh, with a question. And you can find this handout on bennettscience.co if you're looking for that for an extra copy, or if you just want your own copy. Thanks for watching. See you next time.